Hello, this is Beverly Oliver, and we are going to have a conversation with Michael Harrington. Michael Harrington had an opportunity to go to Usha Village, and we are going to talk about that experience and have him share with us his uh, visit to Usha Village, his visit with Dr. Sebi, and his experience at the spa there and, and the facility. Michael, welcome, and thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you very much. Michael, tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your background? What do you do for a living, and where are you based? I'm a veterinary neurosurgeon who does brain and spinal surgery for animals in Salt Lake City, Utah, and Seattle, Washington. Now, the small animals, are they primarily cats and dogs? Primarily, yes, cats and dogs. So how long have you been a veterinarian neurosurgeon? I worked on, as a veterinary neurosurgeon since 1996. Okay. So I guess that's 22 years, I guess. Where did you study? I did most of my training at Washington State University in Coleman, Washington. Okay, very good. When you were in Honduras, did you have an opportunity to treat any animals there or see any animals? Yes, I did. I had many occasions to treat sick or injured animals at multiple sites uh, throughout Honduras, uh, San Pedro Sula, Tegucigalpa, uh, Las Deba, and on the island of Panaha. Well, that's great that you've been to so many places, and that leads me into the next question about travel, because people often wonder about traveling in Honduras. How did you get there, and how long did you stay? I was in Honduras for three weeks, and I got there by flying to, from Atlanta to the island of Roatan. And the first time I went from Roatan and then to uh, Las Bebas and uh, traveled by car through the Mosquito Coast. And then I have also flown into uh, San Pedro Sula and taken a car to Las Bebas and then fly to the island of Guanaja. And you were traveling from your destination, uh, you were traveling from the United States from Salt Lake City? Yes, Salt Lake City and Seattle. I see. And so how long was that trip? Well, each time I've been to Honduras at least three times over the last two years, and I typically stay between two and three weeks on each trip. How did you find the climate in Honduras. How was the travel? Did you feel safe there? I, I felt safe. I, I, there was never an occasion that I did not feel safe when I was traveling in Honduras. I had guides with me who spoke Spanish much better than I do, which was somewhat comforting, but I never experienced any occasion of uh, safety issues or anything like that. I, I never felt that I was in danger or felt unsafe there. Now tell me about your guides again. Uh, people are looking at pictures of some of the people, two of the guys who were with you during your trip. Tell us about them. Oh, Jorge Ferrari was an amazing uh, person. He's a biologist in the country of Boceba who I was introduced to by a, a friend and he helped to show me through Tegucigalpa, Copan, uh, San Pedro Sula, La Ceiba, Guanaja. We traveled most of the country, and I felt very safe traveling with him because he knows the indigenous natives of the Mosquito Coast and all of that. My other um, traveling companion when I went to see Dr. Sebi was named Jaguar, who is a friend of Jorge Ferrari, and he owns a bar in La Ceiba that provides, serves uh, healing uh, potions for different uh, ailments and it treats basically uh, different medical conditions using herbal based medicine. Okay, and I'd like to uh, let our viewers know that Jaguar is the, the gentleman in the glasses on the right. And the gentleman's name on the left again, Michael? Jorge Ferrari. Jorge, Jorge Ferrari. Okay, very good, very good. Now, when you were in 
Lefebvre at Usha Village speaking about potions because you said Jaguar specializes in that at his bar. Did you have an opportunity to take Dr. Sabi's products? Yes, I did. Uh, he, he served me uh, a couple very wonderful uh, uh, drinks that, that were uh, had healing purposes. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't tell you the exact names of them. I don't remember. But they were, they tasted great and, and made me feel wonderful. Okay, very good. Was that every day? How long, how long did you stay at Usha Village specifically? I, I was there one day. We actually stopped to see Dr. Sebi as we were heading out onto an adventure through the Mosquito Coast. So I only had, unfortunately, the opportunity to stay there one day. I, I would certainly love to have the opportunity to go back and stay much longer because it was absolutely beautiful there. The weather was wonderful. The saunas were great. I, I really enjoyed my experience there. Well, I noticed you took a photo of Usha Village and you posted that on your blog. It looks very beautiful. I mean, they've made some changes since I've been there. My last time there was back in, oh, I think it was 2000 and. 8, 2009, I believe it was, and it looks like they've made a lot of changes since I've been there. They said that they were uh, making changes and updating things and, and, and trying to, every day they work towards making it nicer, and it's a very beautiful place, and, and I would, I've told many of my friends about that place and, and about Dr. Sebi because it, it's a very unique experience there. How did you find the spa? It was wonderful. It, it, it was great. I very much enjoyed that. Okay, very good. Now, when did you go to Usha Village specifically? What month was that? It was July 2011. Last year? Yes. Okay, and what was the weather like in July? It was beautiful. It was bright, sunny, absolutely wonderful. Some people remarked about the humidity, but I, I was not extraordinarily humid when I was there. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Did you have a chance to go to the beach to cool off a bit? Oh, yes, yes, and, and it, the beaches are very, very nice there. I, I love Honduras. Oh, fantastic. Now, tell me, why Usha Village and Dr. Sebi? Is it basically because your guy recommended you go there to see him? Yes. Uh, uh, the my guides um, Jorge and Jaguar uh, they knew of Dr. Sebi because uh, Jaguar has actually studied under Dr. Sebi and and uh, they I, I would not have known about Dr. Sebi otherwise but uh, they took me by bus from La Ceiba to meet Dr. Sebi and it was a it was a wonderful afternoon. Fantastic. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the very first time you met Dr. Sebi and take us on through to the time you left. What was he like? He was very engaging and uh, very, uh, very intelligent. He, he had uh, very uh, strong opinions about uh, certain political conversations and things like that. And I, we had a great talk. I was there for, I believe, two hours speaking to Dr. Sebi, and they had told me initially that, that we would only be speaking in Spanish, but we ended up speaking in English, which was good for me because I don't speak Spanish very well, and it was a, a wonderful conversation. I very much enjoyed it, and I would love to have the opportunity to speak to him again. Fantastic. I noticed that you are in a photo with him inside his new home. How is that? Describe that for our viewers. Oh, his new home is beautiful. He, he built most of it himself with himself and his family. So basically that the home is, um, is all hand-built and absolutely beautiful. There lots of big windows, very open. And we met a couple of his patients uh, while I was there, and they were treated to very wonderful accommodations in his home. It was beautiful. I would, I would really recommend that anybody who had the opportunity to visit there t take that opportunity because 
it, it's a it's a once in a lifetime experience. I was I felt very fortunate to have been invited into Dr. Study's home. Oh well, fantastic! That's great. And Michael, can you just talk about the meals that you had there? We were only there for uh, uh, the, the two-hour uh, time frame, and Dr. Sebi's niece, I believe it was, had made some uh, smoothies for us, and they were wonderful, but we did not have any full meals there. I see. Okay, so you're the, uh, the, we, I'm, I'm sorry. We did, we did talk to people who were in the honest with us and, and had, were wandering around. Uh, the village there, and they were very, very happy and, and, and very much enjoyed the accommodations and the meals that they ate. Well, fantastic. And, and Michael, what airline did you take to get to Honduras? Uh, I have used either uh, Delta or Continental. I prefer Delta Airlines, but uh, Continental worked okay. Okay, so those two airlines will go there. So you didn't take Taka because I believe Taka is a major airline in the Caribbean, in the Central America area. I just flew Taka and Sosa from La Ceiba to the island of Guanaja, and, and I, I flew on that airline, but I did not fly internationally with them. Okay. How did you find Rotan? Beautiful. I was only at the airport there, but it's absolutely beautiful. Really? Okay, fantastic. And parting words for people who may be interested in going to Usha Village to visit with Dr. Sebi, or just to go to the village just to heal and experience it. I would just have to say that I think that they would have a wonderful experience there and would be very, very happy that they went and had I, I had nothing but good experiences in Honduras. My travel there was wonderful. Uh, meeting Dr. Sebi was absolutely amazing, and, and I would wholeheartedly recommend um, travel there. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, viewers, for clicking on our interview with Michael Harrington, who had an opportunity to go to Usha Village to visit with Dr. Sebi and to see the healing center there. Again, if you're interested in going to Usha Village, you can contact Dr. Sebi's office, LLC, at 310-838-2490. 310-838-2490. And thank you so much for clicking on our interview with Michael Harrington.